You may remember my capacitor bank from a couple, from about six months ago, where I built this giant capacitor bank using only disposable camera parts. And it worked pretty good, except for the charging aspect. It took several minutes for it to reach a full charge. Even just a small 180 volt charge, small 180 volt charge, took a couple minutes. And I figured there has to be a faster way. So today I'm going to attempt to make a better one using a few parts that you may already have lying around. If not, they're very inexpensive to source. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is a capacitor bank. If you do not know how to make one, check out the link in the description below and you will see my video on how to build your own capacitor bank. Once you do that, we'll get on to the new charger. First thing you're going to want that you might not have yet is a bridge rectifier like I have here. This is kind of dangerous because I do not know what this is rated for. You want to find one that's rated for as many amps as possible because when you hook up a live voltage mains wiring to a capacitor bank that will put a large load on the bridge and that will could draw too much current. That's why I have it on a heat sink to hopefully keep it cool in case something goes wrong. Um, you'll also need a light switch or some sort of switch. I'm using a light switch because I know it, this is rated for 15 amps at 120 volts. So, just a standard mains light switch. You can get these these for about a buck at pretty much any hardware store. You will also need a mains power cable, like this one. It's just a simple two-prong one, should do fine. And you plug it, the type that you plug into the wall, and then it has the two wires, like this. More on that in a minute. You'll need a couple of basic tools. You should be able to get by with wire strippers and a screwdriver. And a soldering iron is definitely recommended. Here is my, my Hako FX888. There's a review on my channel if you are interested in purchasing one. So, let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is take your bridge rectifier and your switch and your power cord. Now, if you don't know how a bridge rectifier works, you can check out one of my basic electronics videos, which I will also have a link in the description to, and it shows you how to make your own linear power supply. That is basically what we are doing today. Um, we are making a high voltage linear power supply. So, what we need to do is solder. If you watch the video, you'll know that there are two sine wave contacts on the bridge rectifier. Mine happen to be the middle two. We're going to solder one of the wires to the bridge rectifier. But here comes the problem. I don't know which wire is the hot wire. And if you know how mains electricity works, hot, neutral, and ground are three types of wires in a wall outlet. And we're going to want to switch off the hot wire. That's why I always have one of these voltage detection sticks. And if it detects some sort of static electricity, it beeps like that. So I'm going to plug in this, this into my power strip. Make sure that the wires do not touch. Okay. So do not touch those wires. And I'm going to turn down the sensitivity a lot. And then we're going to figure out which one beeps, and that'll be the line voltage one. So keep turning up the sensitivity. Not there yet. So it appears to be just about touched it there, appears to be this wire right here. So be sure to unplug this before continuing. So this is going to be the wire that is connected to our switch. So we're going to bend that one off to the side. The other one, I'm going to 
tin and solder to my bridge rectifier. You could probably just twist the wires on or use a crimp connector or something, but I'm going to solder it to make sure I have a very good connection. Because this is a kind of dangerous project and we would not want any problems. Also going to tin the rectifier a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure that that wire is the right length. It is not, so we're going to cut a little bit off. And we are going to attach it to the bridge rectifier. One of the sine wave contacts, the mains input. Let's see if you can get, see. It's not a great solder connection, but it will definitely suit our needs. You want to make sure you try to get a good solder connection. We would not want any issues. So, you could solder it directly to here, but I want to have a power switch so that I can turn it on and off for added safety. Move my solder out of the way. We're going to cut a short jumper using some 18 gauge wire. I do not have that set for the correct gauge. Okay, there's one. And there's two. So on a typical cheap light switch like I have here, these two connectors are the switch connectors. So we're going to bend that over like that after we twisted it. We're going to make sure that it's on one of the terminals. And we're going to screw it down. Be sure to Make sure that is tight. We would not want any sparking. So there's half of our switch. Then the other half of our switch, it would probably work best to do this first, actually. We're going to put the hot wire from our circuit into the light switch as well. And make sure that that's on tight. There. Light switch is set up. So now when we turn it on, it will, it's upside down so it doesn't look right, but it is on right now, theoretically. Oh, we forgot one thing. We have to solder this wire to the bridge. Yes, so step one, just like before, is tin the wire. We are going to trim the wire. And this is the tricky part where having a helping hand is sometimes nice, but it doesn't really work in this case. There. So, now it is set up to run, essentially. But we are missing a couple of things. We need to connect this to the capacitor bank. So, this is where it gets kind of dangerous. I'm going to test this with, some, with a multimeter first to make sure that we have no problems. So I'm going to turn it to the off position. I'm going to take my multimeter. I'm going to get... And we're going to hook that up. We're going to set it to 200 volts AC range. Make sure it is off. Plug it into the wall. And we are going to flip this on. If you see smoke, fire, etc., turn it off. Okay, I'm carefully touching it. It is not getting warm. That is good. We do not want this to heat up. I'm going to test it. Okay, that is not a correct reading. I'm going to try the DC range. Interesting. I think I know what the problem is. It's that it is not 
filtered, so we're getting very weird readings. So I guess we're just going to have to go for broke, and this is pretty dangerous, but necessary. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the power is off. Turn the power off. Put the negative on the rectifier to the negative on the capacitor bank. Like so. We're going to take another jumper, preferably of another color, but I do not have that right now. I happen to grab a yellow one, that's what I'm going to use. Hook that up to the positive. This could be very dangerous, so prepare for a possible huge failure. Three, two, one. Saw a little spark, turn the power off. We are probably good. Let's read this voltage. 161 volts. So there we go. We have charged this capacitor bank to about half charge in less than a second. And to prove that it actually works, I'm going to find a piece of metal to short this out with. We'll just use a piece of wire here. Strip it. You're then going to twist it together. In three, two, one. There you go. That is how you make a fast capacitor bank charger in 11 minutes. So, there you have it. Very simple, easy, and fast project. Just be sure to make sure that it is off when you discharge it and use proper safety measures. I'm going to now turn off my power strip and get this wire that is now welded off of here. Oh yeah, that's, that's welded. It melted the solder on there. That's how powerful it was. So in the old video, it took six minutes to do that, and now it's doing it in like 30 seconds or less. So there you have it, quick, simple, and easy, and affordable charger for your capacitor bank. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you build this if you know how to handle high voltages. So, there you go. I want you to build this project if you can.